Don Barnes here with Red Barnes Audio. And if you do any e-learning audio, you already know that most clients want you to deliver the files cut up into individual segments. So slide one, slide two, slide three are all in their own MP3 or WAV file. What I'm gonna show you today is taking Studio One, we can mark up our audio, and then once we've done that, we can go simply to one menu, song, export stems, set it up properly, and once we have everything set correctly, we're gonna simply press OK, and all 12 slides in this example are gonna be set up, named, in their own folder. We could have done MP3, and I'm gonna show you how to do this in this demo, specifically targeting e-learning. Let's take a look at the process of getting a file all prepared to allowing the software to just chop it all up for us. And I'm gonna go back to the original version of this, which I have saved right here. And this is how it started off for me. It's just a bunch of audio. This is, uh, I think, 12 slides in this example. And each one in between them, before they start, I have it slated. And the way I slate, now you can do anything you want, but this is how I'm doing it. I have a finger snap and then the number. So in this case, you'll hear the finger snap and there's a reason I do a finger snap simply because, and you could use a dog clicker, you could use, you can actually do anything you want that makes it visually identifiable. That's what you're looking for. So if you wanna just put 10 seconds of space between it, that's fine. Then you will know when you've come up to another slide because there's an excessive amount of space, that's fine too. In this case, I just put a finger snap and a number and I can tell that's a slate. And then I can tell right here, it's a slate. There's a finger snap and you can see one here. And I know what they look like visually. So you'll get to know what yours look like visually. Whatever you wanna use is fine by me. That's, there's no magic in my finger snap. It's just the way I did it. I wanna be able to see them, identify them. I don't really wanna to have to listen to them, although I have a tendency to do that. Now, down below, I have something here that I call my silence pads. If I ever say the word silence, that's not really true. These are all room tone pads. And what I'm gonna do is expand them out a little bit for you so you can see. I've labeled them. And in this case, you'll, you'll notice that this says aft three, before three, aft three, before one. What that means is this is a three second pad that I'm gonna use after. This is three seconds that I'll use before. This is one and a half seconds and one and a half seconds before and after. And I can, they also could be asymmetrical. A client could say, afterward, I want three seconds. And before, we require one second. Well, if we got that kind of client, they would end up with this. These are the two pads that I would use for that client. If you need something different, piece of cake. In less than a minute, I can have two more pads created that work for whatever their specifications are. And then one final thing, the colors. Studio One allows you to take these things and set any color you want out of this palette, and you can get pretty darn obnoxious. And that was my goal. And why do I want to be obnoxious? Because I want to know which pad I used and visually be able to identify it once it's in the file. Being visually clear makes it easier to make sure I don't make a mistake. There's two slides in the whole thing that require special handling. Slide number one and then your last slide. So I'm going to do that first. Slide number one requires that I go in and make sure that I put only the before pad. Remember, this is an after pad and a before pad, and you'll see how that works in just a second. I need to put in four, so I'm gonna copy that pad. Then I'm gonna go up into my actual audio here and hold down my control key and click and drag, and now I have a region that's set right here, and I have a macro, which is all my little baby steps. And by the way, this macro is free. If anyone wants it, you get a hold of me, I'll send you this macro so that you can have it and install it. It does require Studio One artist or above, but it's free. It handles all the details for you and it's quick and easy. And so watch this. Now I have a keystroke assigned to it, but I'm not gonna use that in the demo. I'm always gonna click on it just so you see it happen. And slide number one, boom, that took what I had copied there and it put it in and now I have slide number one. One thing you will wanna notice, it also put in a marker. And I'm gonna take this marker out because that marker is not needed. And I'll show you now, as soon as I put in the next one and the next one, then you'll see how this really works. I'm gonna go through and select both of these together. And I'm gonna copy that to the clipboard. And now when I go in, here's my slate for number two. And I'm gonna simply take this, highlight here, here. And really, I normally 
I, I would zoom in just a little bit. I'm very precise with it. During the demo, I may not be as precise, but you'll get the idea. Click this, and here's what it did. It now gave me slide number one is now fully identified. From here, it has its pad before, it has its pad after. This is slide two, and that's why the before, this is really before slide two. And now I'll go in here, and I will do this again. And what you're going to see is this is the boringest demo that you have seen today. Because all I need to do is the same thing. And I like boring when it comes to tech. We, we want to be great actors and narrators and, and spend our time and energy with the actual audio that people are going to hear. This is behind the scenes work. I want boring. I don't want to have something that's exciting here, like I have to think too much. This is a non-thinking activity. So for me, this works great. Now, you know, we'll go through and I'm going to do just a few more of these for you and make sure that we get them all in here. And here's another one here. And we'll finish this up. I'm almost done. And another one here. And we can get that. And another one here. I think we're almost at the end here. And yeah, now we're all the way to the end. And, oh, geez. So you saw, oh, it was automatically numbering these. See, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Now, most of you have already picked up on the fact that I skipped one, and I did it on purpose because that happens in the real world. It was a scenario that I just, I did it enough times to go, hmm, how am I going to deal with this? Well, here's the great thing. Watch my numbers here. This is 9, 10, 11. It's auto-numbering them for me. I can go in and modify them myself if I wish, but it's putting the numbers in for me so I don't have to. So in most cases, I'm going to now come in here and say, whoops, I missed one. And I press my button again. Now, you'll notice it automatically updated all my numbers. What it did do, though, one minor thing, was it gets the spacing slightly wrong. So I can take and take my range tool here. This will allow me to select all my markers beyond that. And now I can adjust one of them, and they'll all be right. I'm actually adjusting all of them at once. Now imagine that I'm doing a big project and I have 50 of these and I had missed one in the middle. Rather than having to go back and renumber all of them, all I need to do is go back and, adjust and just select all of them. And then once I've done that, then I can adjust all of them in one simple operation. So now I have the whole file cut up here. And the only one that I have to deal with, remember I said the second exception, is my end. And at the very end, I have to do essentially the mirror operation to what I did earlier, and here's my after pad. And if I needed a bit different length, I could do that, but I'll just take this one, copy to the clipboard, come over here, put the cursor where that needs to be, and let's get a little more precise there, and then I'm gonna paste. Oh darn, I put it in the wrong track. Well, that's no big deal, because what you have to do is grab this and drag it up, okay? So that ends up dragging up. And if I wasn't exactly precise, I could move it over and get it exactly where it needs to be. So there's my after pad. And even when I made a big boo-boo right here, it's still easy to solve. Then I need to just zoom it in, take my end flag and manually set that proper. All right, if that's set wrong, then it'll just give me some blank space beyond and the final slide would be the wrong length. Instead of having a pad of 1.5, it would have had a pad I don't know, six, seven seconds there, longer than I wanted. I want them all to be consistent. So now I have all these pads here and I can scroll and you can see everything. So the ugly colors actually help make sure visually that if I made a mistake, I can catch it because you can look at it and go, oh, ugly. And if you wanted, you can select this whole thing and you could take all the colors away so that nobody would see it. The thing that would remain is the markers. I'm not going to do that today. I don't, you know, the colors don't bother me. So we're going to use the song menu and export stems. And when we do that, we get the export stems dialog box. And the only thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the wave folder. And we use this little prefix here that I labeled it slide. This is something that you could change if you choose to. I'll just leave it the same. But here's the important part. It's right down here between each marker. That's the thing that is going to allow us to chop up the file between each one of these markers and make it into all its little individual files. Then later, as part of our revision strategy, because Studio One is excellent when it comes time to do revisions because of a combination of the punch and roll and then some other features like this, if we just want to output a single slide, 
we can come in here and outlook output number eight, number five, whichever we choose. Right here, we just change this radio button. So that's a great time saver later when we need to go back and do a little revision. I'm just going to knock these out here. Now it's just putting out my slides. It'll put out 20, 30, 50, 200 of them. And then it opens this to show me, hey, I did what you asked, boss. And now that is done. Now, if I need to go back and do MP3s, it's really difficult. Go into the same box, change this to MP3. Let's put it in a different folder just so it's more obvious that it did what we asked it to do. So we have the MP3 folder, MP3 style, same between each marker. That's there. We choose OK. And now it's outputting the same set of files, duplicate. And then I have my originals back here in this file if I want to do a revision later. And there are all the MP3s. Now I could compress them to send them to my client. That's all stuff you already know how to do. So Studio One's really slick in, in a couple different areas. It can cut all these up for you. You can mark them up. I have this great macro that you can use and you can get free. Just let me know. I'll send it to you. And then I do set this all up for people. I charge them money for that, but I set it all up and so that they don't have to do anything. And then that way you don't even have to understand any of this stuff if you want. Once it's set up one time, there isn't anything to do. You have these pads set up. They're easy. You just pick which ones you want. Make sure you handle the exception at the beginning of the end and then it'll do all the work for you. So it's a really slick product. Understand that the punch and roll in Studio One is among the best in the business, and it's a great reason to use it. I do recommend Studio One Artist, not the free version, because there are some things in it, like this macros, that you can do that will make your job a whole lot easier, and it'll pay you back over and over and over. But I hope you enjoy this demo, and of course, if I can assist, look me up. There's a Facebook group for narrators that are using Studio One. Be sure to join us in the Facebook group. Be sure to like this file, subscribe to this channel if you want more of these types of tips and tricks. And of course, I always enjoy seeing you on the wires. This is Don Barnes with Red Barnes Audio. Look forward to seeing you the next time.